What are you trying to achieve? Let's set aside differences. Let's set aside our egos. Let's check them at the door for a second and let's think about what we're really trying to achieve. Are you trying to achieve better health? Are you trying to achieve fat loss? Are you trying to be the best version of yourself? Then for one minute, I want you to put the ego aside and think about what is actually going to work for you in the long term. Listen closely. I am not anti one meal a day. I did it for a long time. I still do it from time to time and I have lots of clients that do it. But the point is, is that we need to make some radical shifts in how we look at intermittent fasting because one meal a day could be putting you into this classification where you won't be able to truly sustain that lifestyle. So I'm going to teach you why simply shifting to two meals per day could just be the better solution. You're barely shifting when you're eating. You're just splitting it up into two meals. So hear me out on this. Now, the most important thing for me to note here is one meal a day has strong merit. It has strong merit because you're going for longer periods of time with fasting where you have an opportunity for your body to create large amounts of ketones that have amazing healing properties. Okay, amazing for fat loss, amazing for cellular regeneration, amazing for genetic functioning, for actually helping gene expression. No denying that. Okay, but we have to look at what's going to happen when you're breaking that fast or when you're breaking and eating a bunch of food one time. Now, full disclaimer, a lot of this can change if you're doing one meal a day with carbohydrates or if you're doing one meal a day while following a ketogenic diet. But for all intents and purposes, I'm going to talk about it as one and the same. So let's first take a look at a study that takes a look at the fasting glucose side of things. It was published in the journal Metabolism. Okay, it took a look at test subjects that were either doing one meal a day or eating three meals per day. Not exactly apples to apples in the world of fasting, but still. Interestingly enough, what they found, the group that did one meal a day ended up having astonishingly higher levels of fasting glucose the next morning, which is indicative of the body not utilizing that fuel properly because they're waking up in the morning and they're having high levels of glucose because their body didn't assimilate all of it. The other really important thing that we noticed with this study is that their insulin sensitivity decreased. Now, just to enlighten you really quick, insulin sensitivity is really what we're trying to achieve with fasting. Insulin sensitivity is how receptive our cells are to absorbing nutrients. It's the opposite of insulin resistance, the opposite of diabetes. So how come when they ate one meal a day, their insulin sensitivity decreased? They became more insulin resistant. Now, there's a lot of things that we could throw into the pot here. Peripheral insulin resistance, all this complicated stuff. Let's not worry about that right now. The point is, you're probably not utilizing all those nutrients. So you're kind of wasting time, money, and energy. But there's another piece that I think is even more important. If you know me, you know that inflammation is near and dear to me, okay? I lost 100 pounds myself, I was chronically inflamed, my wife has suffered from autoimmune conditions for years, and she deals with inflammation, I deal with inflammation. So there are studies that have shown that overeating in one sitting triggers inflammation via a viral pathway known as PKR. So let's talk about that for one second. Okay, so the journal Cell published a study found that when mice were overeating, and again, it's mice, yes, so not apples to apples, but hear me out. When mice would overeat, it activated this viral response known as PKR. And this PKR did two things. One, it activated the immune system, and two, it shut off protein synthesis. What does that mean? Well, here's a fun analogy that I've talked about in other videos before. Okay, imagine a castle for one second, and this castle suddenly comes under attack. So the castle sends out all of its soldiers, and the soldiers go out, the soldiers are your immune system, and they go out and they try to fight the enemy. Okay, but in the meantime, the castle still needs to protect itself. So it rolls up the drawbridge, and it says, well, in the meantime, nobody's allowed in. Not good, not bad, not ugly. It's kind of like TSA, right? <laughs> They're not letting anybody in, whether you're good, bad, or ugly. That is exactly what was happening with this metaflammation study, with this whole thing where they consume so much in the way of nutrients, good, bad, and ugly, that it caused the body to just say, well, this is too much. I gotta put on the brakes, right? Does this always mean that this is going to occur? For heaven's sake, no. It doesn't necessarily mean that. But it gives us a clearer indicator, once again, that we can only absorb so much at one point in time. Here's another analogy to make some sense of this, right? Okay, what if you have a funnel? And this funnel is your digestive system. If you were to pour a little bit of water into this funnel, you would have it go through the funnel and you'd absorb it, right? But if you were to take a whole gallon jug of water and pour it into a small funnel, it's gonna fill up over the top of the funnel and overflow. And that could be fat deposition, that could be glucose, that could be all kinds of negative things, right? We have to respect that. So now let's talk about what you can do. 
what you should do, and what might be a longer term strategy for you. This is where what is called two meal a day comes into handy. Okay, one meal a day, self-explanatory. Two meals, we're splitting it up into two meals. We have to respect something extremely important with fasting. When we are fasting, we become insulin sensitive. This means when we do eat, we are in an opportune time to get the right foods in. And I would argue that it is next to impossible to get all the right foods in and the right combinations in one simple meal. So by doing it in two, you allow yourself to absorb the nutrients from the first before moving on to a larger meal. The simple point here is don't be lazy. It's easy to do one meal a day and just say, ha it's time to break my fast. I'm just gonna eat everything that I can. Well, you're insulin sensitive, so your body's just gonna absorb that. Fats, carbs, proteins, whatever. Again, if you're keto, it's slightly different. Okay, so what I'm suggesting is when you break your fast, you do so strategically with a small meal. So rather than having 100% of your calories at one point in time, you have 25% when you break your fast, and then you have 75% about an hour later. So is that really that hard? Am I really that terrible of a person for telling you that OMAD probably isn't sustainable and shifting you just an hour and going to two meals a day in a slightly larger window? I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I'm just trying to help you with this. So here's what I would recommend doing. When you are ready to break your fast, you should probably consume a little bit of bone broth first. Okay, and I don't care if you're gonna stick with OMAD or go to TUMAD or whatever. Okay, studies have time and time shown. In fact, there was a study that was published in Tissues and Cell that found that throughout any kind of fasting, your gut mucosal layer wears away and the actual villi would actually absorb nutrients shorten. So you have less ability to absorb nutrients because your mucosal layer is wearing down. So bone broth is going to give you the collagen and give you the support for that. Those of you that know my channel, I'm always talking about kettle and fire. I'm always touting them. I've talked about them in a bunch of other videos. So for the record, if you want to check them out, I put a link for your use down below in the description. You can check out uh, their different soups. You can check out their seasoned bone broths that you can use when you break a fast. You can use their regular straight up uh, grass fed beef bone broth, chicken, mushroom, whatever. So go ahead and check them out. Special link special discount for anyone that's an avid follower of my channel or who watches these videos so you don't want to miss that so please 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 do check them out so you'd want to break your fast with some bone broth but alongside that bone broth you want to have a little bit of lean protein I don't recommend consuming fats right when you break a fast because first of all your body's not going to be able to absorb them very well but second of all it's really hard to combine all your right foods right if you combine fat with carbohydrates a lot of times the fat gets thrown into storage too so whether you're keto or not, I recommend breaking your fast with bone broth and lean protein, whether it's a protein shake with no added fats or lean chicken or preferably lean seafood, okay, like some scallops, some shrimp, some whitefish, something like that without any butter on it, just nice and clean and lean, okay? So you do this, you break your fast with that, okay, with mostly protein and if you're not doing keto, then you can add some clean lean carbohydrates like maybe some sweet potatoes or something somewhat high glycemic like a, like a baked potato with no butter. Okay, I'm not gonna go into exquisite detail. FYI, I'll put down in the description all the videos that I've done that talk about how to break a fast properly because I just don't wanna waste your time on this video. Okay. And then after you complete that, and after you consume the bone broth and everything, then 60, 90 minutes later, then consume your larger meal. So here's what's happened. You've spiked your insulin with that first meal, so you're no longer insulin sensitive. So that means the next meal that you have, you're not going to have that risk of it spilling over into excess. So it's not that difficult, okay? If you follow the strategy, it will make sense and it will work. And one of the things that you might be wondering is how long should you fast and how often should you fast? That's entirely up to you. But if you are following this strategy with two meals per day, it lends itself to approximately a 19 to 20 hour fast. Think about it, 16 hour fast isn't gonna work with one meal a day unless your entire one meal takes you eight hours to eat. You get what I'm saying? So this implies that you would be fasting for long periods of time. And if you do this every single day, you're going to end up with a slowed metabolism. So if you follow one meal a day or two meal a day, do yourself a favor and try to follow it as an alternate day fasting mechanism where you fast one day and don't fast the next. Fast one day, don't fast the next. I don't really want back-to-back -back fasting days, but anyhow, I've got all that stuff in other videos. Point is, do it right, but you have to remember what is your goal? What are you after and what is important to you without the ego? So as always, I ask of you to please, please hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on the notifications 
And then also make sure you comment any future ideas for videos. Or if you want me to expand more on one meal a day or expand more on two meals a day, or if there's just things that you want to know about when it comes down to what you should eat during your actual eating window. Because remember, how you break your fast is even more important than your actual fast itself. So thank you very much for being here. And as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.